actually very excited about the Batgirl movie, and I think by the end of this video, your hopes will be raised for it as well. But I'm keeping my, my hopes in check still because of Christina Hodson being the screenwriter for this movie. She did such a bad job adapting the source material for Birds of Prey that I, I'm just, I'm scared. I'm scared. And that's probably why I think I had a little bit of a bad reaction to this suit, and maybe some of you did as well, maybe even subconsciously. Maybe after I say this, it'll be like, oh yeah, that's why I had a little bit of a problem too. And that it concerns me that it's another Birds of Prey situation. Um, and that, you know, Batgirl's gonna get that character treatment. And of course, Birds of Prey had its fans, but it was very niche in terms of its appeal. And you know, I don't want that for this Batgirl movie. I want it to be a big success. And it certainly has all the other pieces that it needs to be to do so. I, I, at this point, Christina Hodson really just has to get out of the movie's way. And I, I think that the two directors from Bad Boys for Life, I have a lot of faith in them. And so I think hopefully, you know, you know, on a movie, the directors have like the final call on stuff. So I, I, I have hope, hope for them to, to guide this to a good place. I'm still scared though. All right, let's go over it. Now, Batgirl is about to start filming action scenes on, on location in Scotland this coming week. They've done a couple of like civilian scenes, but next week she's probably gonna wear the suit on set. Uh, as I've told you before, Glasgow is the new uh, movie Gotham for Warner Brothers with not just the Flash and Batgirl filming there, but even non-DCEU movie, The Batman, having its Gotham uh, in Glasgow, the streets of Glasgow as well. Uh, Warner Brothers therefore wanted a proper reveal for the latest bat suit instead of you seeing it on set, which is why very late on Friday, uh, like, like 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we got a, a reveal on Leslie Grace's Instagram account. Full pic, by the way, shows the Doc Martin boots, which are crucial to this uh, version of the suit. Uh, and there are two quotes accompanying the pic, uh, which didn't really make it over to Twitter, but they were over on Instagram. And they're important because they're both pulled directly from Batgirl year one. Uh, two different scenes, actually. One against her jujitsu instructor, and another when she uh, makes her crime fighting debut at a costume party. That's right. In Batgirl year one, Barbara's first bat suit is a costume for a party, meant to get under her dad's skin, who she feels is being overprotective of her. But when Killer Moth crashes the party, Batgirl is born. Love it. In the comic, Killer Moth later teams up with Firefly, who Brendan Fraser is playing in the upcoming HBO, HBO Max movie, and I'm sure that's one of the reasons they picked his character uh, for this film, because this is clearly very heavily based on the Batgirl Year One comic. Side note, I highly recommend you read that comic, not only to get ready for this movie, but because it's fantastic. You can even buy it in a bundle with the equally good Robin Year One, who we'll also be talking about in this video. All right, but back to this costume party first. Yes, Bab's original suit is supposed to, is supposed to look homemade, which is the excuse some fans have had uh, for this suit not looking 100%. They're like, well, it's probably not her final suit, and I'm sure it isn't. But to me, this looks too good for homemade. It's stuck in this weird middle ground where it's too good for homemade and not good enough for professional, but it doesn't really hit in either space because of that. It does, you're not like, ooh, it's a homemade suit, cool. But you're not like, oh, it's her cool professional suit either. Uh, I'd have preferred something closer to Spider-Man's homemade suit that was shown briefly in Civil War. You know, so so low rent that it has a comedic element to it. I think that would have been fantastic. For instance, in Batgirl Year One, Barbara's heel breaks off mid-fight, which leads her to make the decision to swear off high heels in her costume going forward. I love practical stuff like that, especially for female characters. I think that's just fabulous. Um, and I, I hope maybe we'll get a, very, a, a version of that here. It's just such a great moment. Also note that in the Batgirl Year One comic, the costume is black, blue, and yellow, as it was in the animated series, and also in her very first appearance in the comics. And to be honest, I would have preferred that color palette for this as well. We'll talk about the purple in a moment. But you know what? I want to keep an open mind here, so that's why in this video we're going to do pros and cons for the new suit. And then I want to talk about Jim Gordon and Dick Grayson. All right, so let's start off with pros. I took a poll yesterday, well, Friday going into Saturday, and with almost 20,000 votes, about 70% 70 of, 70 of you fall into the positive category, somewhat positive. And that's even with Snyderverse uh, fans gunning for this movie. So that's impressive. That's impressive. I mean, uh, not for me, might have won the overall poll, but when you look at how the other three are, you know, in the positive section, uh, 
That's incredible. That's really a good sign for the movie. Also, as you might recall, I did not care for the first looks at Wonder Woman or Harley Quinn's costumes and came to like them quite a bit. So maybe that'll happen here too. And no matter what we think of this costume, Leslie Grace looks absolutely stunning in it. Look at those cheekbones! Angelina Jolie vibes for sure. Robin also wears bright colors, so this makes Batgirl kind of more at his level appear, right? Again, he's going to be in this movie. We'll talk about him in full in a moment. Uh, and this more colorful look also, come to think of it, fits with where the DCEU is going from this point onward with Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Flash, and Shazam. Don't worry, I'm going to do a con side in a moment. And this is a promotional still, so the lighting in the movie might make it look very different, right? Uh, it certainly doesn't look anything like the concept art that they floated out there. And it is com it is comics and Adam West show accurate. You know, the recent Burnside suit and Yvonne Craig's look on that classic show. Now, on that note, let's transition over into the cons list, right? Because I agree with one of your tweets, and that's while I intellectually respect the suit, I just personally don't care for it. I look at it and I go, not, not what I would have gone with. It's way too shiny. One of you sent me this great cosplay version of the Burnside suit, which has matte fabric, which I think makes a big difference. Um, and, I've, and also, I think you could have a cool Frank Miller thing where in the darkness, the yellow just stands out, right? That could have been really cool. That could be really cool because all the yellow pieces on this version of the costume. But I've just never liked Barbara uh, Gordon in purple. I don't like the purple suit for her. I know they used it on the recent Harley Quinn show. I don't care. I don't like it. And this is what, once again, DC's problem of dividing its fans rears its ugly head again. And that there are multiple versions of their characters where the fans don't overlap. Fans are in very decisive camps. Like this, some, of, some people like the purple suit. Some, a lot of people don't. And in fact, Warner Brothers, for some reason, always chooses, or is it Christina Hansen, always chooses the smaller fandom, right? I mean, the Burnside suit only lasted four years in the comics before DC switched her back to blue, yellow, uh, gray, black. So even in the comics, the Burnside suit wasn't a huge hit. It might have been a huge hit in the, in like the media, and I think people might have been like, oh, I, it's a cool suit, but they didn't read the comic. It didn't translate into sales for the comics uh, long term. Uh, so far, with the exception of Aquaman, which benefited from being also comics accurate, uh, and also, you know, I think James Wan brings an edginess to it because of his horror background, and um, Jason Momoa is kind of an edgy guy. Uh, but DC fans, for the most part, don't like candy-colored DC movies. Just look at how what happened with Wonder Woman 1984, which stripped out all of its grittiness for the sequel and paid for it dearly. And how does this suit fit with Michael Keaton's Batman? If they're do, I mean, if they're, and also if they're doing a twist on Batman Beyond, I would have preferred to have some red in the suit, but then that becomes a problem because then it becomes too much like Batwoman's suit. Ah, uh, crazy. I do feel personally there's a little too many Bat people, and I really hate that Harley Quinn has become kind of a member of the Bat team in the comics. That's like a horrible idea. I hate that so much. All right, so anyway. Also, after looking at this photo for a day or two, it hit me what I dislike about it the most, and that's that it's a glamour beauty shot. And Leslie Grace looks stunning, but Barbara Gordon would never do a beauty shot. It's just totally out of character. She's spunky. She's a spunky character. You know, that's why it's been a problem with the sexualization of the character and some of the animated stuff they've done, and also even sometimes in some of the, some of the stories they've been telling with her. Um, Barbara is spunky. Barbara is extremely strong and feminine, you know, appeal to women. Uh, and I think that's what sets her apart from other DC characters, particularly in the Batverse. So to see her lose that is concerning. But again, this is just a publicity still. Um, I think Hollywood sometimes doesn't, it's a shame that they don't realize that. Uh, and the Doc Martens help, you know, I wish they hadn't been cut out of the photo that everybody saw for the most part because they do give her a little bit of that spunk. So I hope that in the actual movie, Leslie Grace gets to play spunky and spunky and playful. Uh, even the famous Burnside debut cover for that co uh, costume has her taking a selfie, which I think was really cute. And I think that's the vibe that we want to see in the actual movie. We don't want any voguing on the rooftops of Gotham. It's totally out of character. Finally, I want to talk about, some, let's talk about the supporting characters for this movie because Babs has amazing ones, right? From Batgirl Year One to even the current Joker comic, which is very much a Jim Gordon comic as well. It's really actually Joker and Jim Gordon. Great comic. I, I really like it. James Tinian's actually done, I think, some pretty darn good work with Batman. Uh, but uh, you know, all of his Bat comics. I think he's about to leave the, the, the Batverse to do some other stuff, but he's done, a, he's done some real nice stuff. Although he did do the Harley Quinn as a Bat member, family, member of the Bat family. But uh, everything else was good. 
But anyway, take a look at the recent Joker annual. They have a very good flashback story there in particular. And in fact, I was reading it the other day, and I was a little behind on my comics, and it's what made me feel particularly good about this movie. Because Barbara's origin story is very much about living in the same house with her father, J.K. Simmons, coming back strong, who knows or at least suspects his daughter's secret identity, but respects her enough to let her keep her secrets until she's ready to share them. She never really shares them. Uh, well, and he's, so he's struggling as a father, worrying about his daughter's safety, and as a police commissioner, having firsthand knowledge of exactly how, how much danger she's in. In fact, they often find themselves at the very same crime scenes, and he has to play along with her game not only to respect her, but because he's not 100% sure that she's Batgirl. He's pretty sure, though. Uh, that's going to be great for, uh, for, um, for J.K. Simmons to play if he gets to do that. Then there's Dick Grayson as Robin, right? Uh, who is Barbara's peer, ally, and advocate. Uh, remember, Robin was invited into, the, invited into the vigilante business by Batman, but Barbara crashes the party and has to earn a spot on Batman's team. And in the Batgirl Year One comic, Robin does quite a bit to, to try and uh, win Batman over to her. We've already seen a very cool mural on set uh, for Batgirl of Batman and Robin, but that has revealed a giant multiverse knot. Who's that Batman, right? I mean, I don't believe Michael Keaton is in the field in this movie. We'll see. Uh, and he, he doesn't, I don't believe he brings a Robin over with him from the multiverse in the Flash movie. So, and also we know in the DCEU, Ben Affleck's Robin is killed. His Dick Grayson is killed. Are they going to have, like, I don't know, with Christina Hodson, I think anything could happen. I wouldn't be surprised if it was a different Robin. You know, there have been a number of Robins through the years and one of them becomes Nightwing instead of Dick Grayson. I mean, that would be a horrible thing to do. The fandom would just absolutely rise as one. Uh, but I could see Christina Hudson writing that, and that makes me very nervous. I haven't been able to peg down any of the specifics on this Robin slash Nightwing. I just know he's going to start out as Robin in this movie, become Nightwing, get his own projects. And there are rumors about casting, but I haven't been able to nail any of them down. Although one of the rumors makes me feel that it could be a different, it could be a different, um, it could even be Damien, which would be interesting. But, but. Well, how did, when did this happen? When did Batman get a Robin? You know, and is he left alone? And then you, Michael, Ke Michael Keaton's Bruce Wayne comes and finds him, and that's when he became Nightwing, or does he become Nightwing based off of the events in this movie? We'll, we'll have to find out. But it's, you know, there's a very special timeline that needs, I think, it, you know, God help whoever decides to play around with that. You better do it in a really clever way. I mean, maybe Barbara will be the one to inspire Dick Grayson this time around uh, regarding career choices because he sees her being independent from Batman, not totally within Batman's camp. And maybe that's what causes him to want to go straight out on his own. We'll see. And also we get to explore their romance from the comics. That will be interesting as well. So with the complex Jim Gordon and Dick Grayson storylines, or some Robin Nightwing, I almost in a way wish this was an HBO Max series rather than a movie so they had time to explore all of this appropriately and correctly. I'm nervous. By the way, with the Christmas setting seen uh, on uh, location, the film is probably coming out towards the end of the year for the holidays, just like Hawkeye did this past holiday season. And although Batman Returns is holiday themed, I think came out like in the middle of the summer. So you never know. And remember, Snyder vs. Luther got out of jail. He broke out of Arkham. So this cover story that was spotted on set that's got to be a different Luther, but then what Luther is that? Maybe when Flash comes back, he messes things up, messes things up a little bit. You know, we have to see what happens in the Flash movie. Uh, we also see a Wayne. We've also seen a Wayne Tech logo on set, and the Simon Stag's uh, Stag Enterprises teased as well. That's Metamorpho's main villain from the comics, and he has a daughter, Sapphire Stag. So a lot of evil businessmen in comics, and particularly in DC, just like real life. All right, so I'm very excited to see more of Batgirl, and I'm excited to see this new DCEU take shape. Again, I just wish Christina Hodson wasn't the architect of it. I hope we're all happily surprised. Uh, so what do you think? Uh, what do you think of the potential of this movie? What do you think of the suit? Pros and cons? Share those thoughts down below. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.